minimally invasive vitreous surgery has reduced our need for sutures. However, suture related problems like localized inflammation, thinning, foreign body sensation and discomfort to the patient can still arise and frustrate both the doctor and the patient. Let us look at our first case who required sutures for a leaky sclerotomy following 23 gauge vitrectomy for chronic lens induced vitritis and glaucoma. In this case, the inferotemporal sclerotomy was leaking balanced salt solution despite massage. A decision was taken to employ sutures to secure closure. 7-0 polygalactin or vicryl sutures were passed transconjunctively through partial thickness sclera. Intraoperative Seidel's test was performed with povidone iodine over the sclerotomy and no leakage was confirmed. Instead of tying the two ends of the suture, they were trimmed flush with the conjunctiva. The conjunctiva was gently displaced to let the cut ends of the suture slip into the subconjunctival space, ensuring that none of the vicryl remained on the surface. A negative Seidel's test confirmed secure closure. In the post-operative period, the polycalactin fragment employed could be seen in the subconjunctival space without undue inflammation. The next case underwent a two-port 23-gauge silicone oil removal four months after vitrectomy combined with scleral buckling for retinal detachment in his only seeing eye. The infusion cannula was removed and the sclerotomy massaged. Balanced salt solution leak was seen from this sclerotomy. As demonstrated in the previous case, 7-0 polygalactin or vicryl suture was passed perpendicular to the sclerotomy. A negative Seidel's test gave us an indication that tying the two surface ends was unnecessary. Both ends of the suture were hence cut. The conjunctiva in this case was less mobile due to adhesions from previous peritoneal. However, we were able to slip in the cut ends of the suture into the subconjunctival space. Trimming one end of the suture and pushing it from there into the subconjunctival space helped. At the end, we rechecked the sclerotomy for leakage. In the post-operative period, the subconjunctival suture ends are barely visible. Our third case was a 68-year-old male patient on whom 23-gauge vitrectomy was performed with base shaving for dropped nuclear fragments during previous phacoemulsification. Fluidair exchange did not allow sealing of the superotemporal sclerotomy. It was decided to suture the sclerotomy. The 7-0 polygalactin suture was passed transconjunctively perpendicular to the sclerotomy. The sclerotomy leak stopped and we did not feel the need to tie the suture. Both ends of the suture were trimmed and subsequently slipped into the subconjunctival space. After removal of the last cannula, air that had passed into the subconjunctival space was removed at the same time, watching for stability of closure of our sclerotomy. The ends of the suture and the sclerotomy can be seen here. Our wound closure is quite stable. 
In the post-operative period, the sclerotomy and the polyglactin suture ends can be seen in the subconjunctival space without any surface issues. Let us now see the rationale of what is happening. In our situation at the sclerotomy, two forces are acting. Force, which is intraocular pressure into the area of the sclerotomy tends to push fluids outside, whereas surface tension tends to keep the fluid inside. At equilibrium, the force and the surface tension are equal, creating no leakage. However, if intraocular force increases, the surface tension is not able to keep fluids inside and the sclerotomies leak. Now let us see what can be modified here. Two factors can be modified. Either the intraocular pressure can be reduced or the area of the sclerotomy can be reduced as happens when we move to smaller gauges. And that is the reason that leakage is less common with 25 gauge and 27 gauge. Our polyglactin fragment acts like a plug, effectively reduces this area of the sclerotomy by half and restores the balance of forces in our favor preventing leakage. In our study on using polyglactin fragments as plugs for closure, we compared 29 eyes where this unique method was employed to 50 controls where we use conventional sutures. Most of the eyes were to be left with air or gas tamponade. About one third of the eyes were left with BSS or silicone oil. Parameters analyzed were related to the integrity of the sclerotomy and local complications. The results were very satisfying. None of the eyes had postoperative hypotony or subconjunctival tamponade. While none of the polyglactin plug cases had excessive local inflammation, a significant number of tight sclerotomies did. Patients whose sclerotomies were closed with polyglactin plugs were much more comfortable than those with conventional sutures. Thus, the polyglactin plug was found effective at securing closure, safe and without complications, and very patient friendly. We leave you with an interesting case. In this eye, the upper sclerotomy was tied conventionally, while the lower was plugged. The difference is for you to see.